It is time to go racing once again in a new season for the 2024 European Le Mans series with United from pole position. Listen to the noise. Oh, I've missed this. And down into the first corner goes Philipp Ugran with Matthias Kaiser trying to hang on to his coattails, but he may well lose out. No, Kaiser in the sky blue, I think, has just held on. No, moving down to second position now as Lorenzo Fluxer starts to flex his muscles in that second place car for Cool. And Cool wants to be in second and third as there's an early spin for the number five car of RLR, M Sport, and James Dayson. We haven't yet had the carnage that we had, though, last year through the first sequence of corners. I don't want to speak too soon. Down the hill into turn five we go. Yeah, did see one of the two Nielsen racing cars run wide at the first turn, has rejoined using that little escape road. Robert Kibitzer, though, has made very good early progress here. Philippe Ugran caught napping there because, because Lorenzo Fluxer Thankfully, both wise to the fact that that was a fake green coming through the final corner and done slightly in error. It looks a little bit battered and bruised, actually, the front battered. of that car. He's yeah, it is. To the front of that car, this, well, it, uh, it looks like the front right may be a similar shape as well. So they're going to take the nose off the car and replace it. That's one of the reasons why it won't have been going as fast as it should be. Ugran desperately trying to block off the cool racing car, but he couldn't do that too much, otherwise he would have been penalised. Just gently inching the car over to the right, and actually there was the briefest Goodyear rubber on the grass there from Lorenzo Fluxer. Oh, there's a clash there between the number 10 and the 47, and both in the gravel, and they're not going to get out of there without assistance. Fifth place battle between Alejandro Garcia and Ryan Cullen, yellow at turn one. Tony Wells with two wheels on the grass there, very dusty grass as well to try and stay out of this scrap that involves LMP3s and the Kessel Racing car guy, LM GT3 Ferrari. As the Lamborghini goes incredibly wide and he's out in the dirt, I even saw that in the mirror there of our onboard camera for Sarah Bovi, but Hamaguchi rescued the situation and Bovi in the 85 Porsche has slipped back because of the latest bout of pit stops. Oh, and that, that's uh, another mirror gone. That was a mirror on the 57 car going awry. The right-hand mirror hitting the scenery after side-by-side -side contact with the... That is the second of the RLR cars, the 15 car. The problem is the time reads as 11 colon 3. So we start at 11.30, so you've got okay. about nine minutes to choose from there. But actually the message was issued at 11.36, so probably can only concern the first two laps. Takeshi Kimura fending off a string of cars behind one Lamborghini, the wailing 5.2 litre V10, and then three other Ferraris, all equipped with mirrors, by the way. They are, so already equipped. having an advantage over Kimura, who sits in second, but may well be a sitting duck right now because of his restricted rear visibility. So here's the other point, which is, of course, minimum weight. Yes, although well, they're surely made of carbon fibre, so they won't weigh a great deal. A couple of kilos, maybe. I honestly do think that they're used... Yes, they're a gauge. Often, you know, um, supercar drivers in Australia will say that really the mirror's there to just work out how far you are from the concrete blocks at the edge of the street circuit. And as soon as you whip one off, then you've gone too close. The Ferrari will now pit, but I do think in GT racing, they're pretty crucial. If someone's going to stab a move up the inside, you need to be able to see them coming. goes is another side-by-side -side contact now was that caused by a lack of mirror so I certainly wasn't messing about she's got about 12 minutes before her bronze time is done it's a familiar trio in the European Le Mans series with Michel Gatting and Rahel Fry Rahel not racing with the, the group in the FI World Endurance Championship this year there's trouble there and that was 
touch from the 23 car on the rear of the 12 that has sent the WTM Barinaldi racing car of Torsten and Kratz around. There you go, that's the number nine car um, up the inside, very much up the inside, going by two of the LMP3s. Duquesne up against the 27. Nielsen Racing. Nielsen Racing for it's all Nico Pino. That's all getting a bit, that was, I'm afraid, that was self inflicted. It was uh, Jean Baptiste Simonauer trying to get stuck into the 27 car of Nico Pino. Pino would not have known that Simonauer was there, and uh, it's a concerning place to put your nose. You need to make sure that the car alongside is fully aware. With the familiar colours, but a different uh, blend of those colours this year for GR Racing. And matching wheels on that Ferrari, which looked very, very smart, I noticed, as they were doing the tyre change. And reflective, by the way. So what the wheels are? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> Like hot wheels. And meantime, nose to tail Oof. contact and then into the side of the Lamborghini for the 21 United Autosports cars. That was a fair old shove as well. Was, that's Axel Jeffries, the silver rank driver in the 63. The inside there, neatly done from Conor and Larson, and he grabs second place from Axel Jeffries. So it's now Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini. This is the change, Casper Stevenson up the inside there of Johnny Adam, and that is a change of position between the two Aston Martins. They're absolutely side by side, but Cordwell's already got the lead. Wow. Unless late on the brakes, can Miata can go down into turn four, but no. And rejoining, or is this the continuation of the fight? No, these two cars have not been in the pits yet. Nope. Artur Leclerc has got ahead, though, now of Massio Capiato. It looked like Leclerc had just come out of the pits because he was so far over to the right-hand side. Outside. The two Aston Martins trading paints. Nice. Don't mind a bit of that. Now and again, side-by-side -side action. They have nothing to do with one another. One team from Switzerland, the other one from the UK. Bit Greek too. Motorsport to just knock down a position. Off. Car off in the gravel. Now this might force the hand of Eduardo Freitas and the rest of his team. That's Nelson Piquet Jr. So Laurence Hoare in the orange and white and black DKR. There was touch there, and then in he goes, and he was into the wall. You could effectively say he was spun out. Um, now into full course yellow. So Laurence Hoare may be misjudging precisely where the front of his car was. It's the 88, oh, and there's problems here for the Iron Dames oh, no. Porsche from the, from the lead of the race. And it's as it was coming out of pit road, has not got any further. I don't think he's even reached the racetrack. It's off on the grass just after the timing loop at the end of pit lane. That's the 47 car of Paul Luc Chatat, who's looking to try and stay with James Allen for 11th position. And very close indeed, here is the 47. Might only be for 10th place, but later on the brakes and a very different route into the first corner. 7 will gain the spot. Does, does it meet entirely? That's Paul Luc Chatin there, then, to get ahead of Duquesne's car. Looks up the inside there, there's no way through there, Julien. Is that it is outside the parameters that the balanced performance offers them the opportunity to try to achieve. And that, Johnny Palmer, is the key thing. Mm. Balance of performance, you can view it in two ways. Are they putting a glass ceiling on performance? Yes, they are, but they're tough to get to. The knack, the skill, the excellence is getting as close as possible to those parameters as long as possible as you possibly can. Yeah, and the, that, that's where some creativity has to be left in the system for the teams to extract it. You've got to give the, the playing field for the teams to work out how to win these races rather than just stick them all on rails. There is the Nielsen car just coming out of shots. This is Flicking tricky. Switch. I Lin's going to allow Quinn through. I think he has. But that's cost Lin a bit of time. 
And you're looking out for the red roof, the red visor. There it is of the number 22 United Order Sports car of Ben Hanley, who can more or less touch both oh. of them. Oh, and with one car going very wide now. Is that Lynn or is that Quinn? It's the it's Quinn, Quinn car. car. So Quinn, having been allowed by Alex Lynn, makes a slight error coming out of turn three. And Ben Hanley's right with Alex Quinn now and surely will try and deposit that car as quickly as possible. This, this is his moment to pounce. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. This is this lap and one more, I think, Johnny. Side by side between the 20. Uh, that, uh, that, that is Hanley through. Malte Jakobsen managing this to the end here. He is coming through turn 12 to start what I believe will be his... Will it be his final lap? It won't be, I don't think. I think it's this plus two more. Yeah. Well, that could be very, very important if you're in the seat of Ben Hanley, who got really close to both of the APR cars a moment or two ago. Then Alex, Lynn made, Alex Quinn made a slight mistake coming out of turn three. It's two more. It's two minutes to go as he crossed the line, so it's two more laps plus this one that these gentlemen are on at the moment. Here are cool racing. They've taken victory in LMP2 Pro-Am before, but never as an outright LMP2 victory. And it's certainly thanks to the closing driver, who is Malta Jakobsen. We've known this kid is a star for so many years already. And cool racing take the opening win of the season for the European Le Mans Series. To race to be completed. It is Formula Racing that take the win, though. Father and son... Uh, Conrad and Johnny Larson, the other way around rather, and Nicholas Nielsen. Also home was the winning car in AF Corsa, right in the wheel tracks of Melty Jakobsen. Mathieu Vazavier brings it home with Alessio Rivera and Francois Perodo, who is going to be the final podium sitter. It's right to the end of this race, Johnny. It's the Virage car ahead of the, the battle for the final podium position on GT3. Yeah, so, so close, but as they go across the line, Julien Henrion will take the win. 139 laps completed then at the first race of the season for Cool Racing, who are winners from Algarve Pro Racing by 16 seconds. It's the combination of Matthias Kaiser, Oli Caldwell and Alex Lynn who just miss out on the race win from the number 22 United Autosports car. Edex Sport finished fourth ahead of Panis Racing. An LMP2 Pro-Am won by AF Corsa. Mathieu Vaxavier in the 83 car along with Alessio Rivera and with Francois Perodo. LMGT3 won by Formula Racing.